All right. Welcome, well, welcome, welcome to our weekly talk show, New Gambia Platform. Today is August 28, uh, 2022. Today we're going to be discussing about the educational system in the Gambia. What are the ways to make um, our education system better? And what are our issues? And um, how to move forward? As we know, we have a youth population of over 60 percent, and uh, we need to really um, look into our educational system to see how uh, these folks can be um, useful or productive in the near future. So without education, we can have that. So I'll have our panelists here, Alas, Alas from Germany. Welcome, Alas. And we have Sam Sise, Indiana. And we have uh, Ndei Sise, Gambia. So I'm your host here, Mumudu Sawane. Welcome. Now, um, our educational system. Alas, if you can give us an overview of yeah, what do you think of Gambian education system? You thought about it? Then Sam can come in and they can come in and we can ask questions. Yeah, well, thank you, Mr. Sawane. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Day. And people listening. Yeah, Mr. Sawane, your topic is interesting. I mean, and it's the cry of the country, I think, nowadays, because parents are seeing that they are, they cannot even have hopes now for their their, their kids, you know. Um, yeah, the educational system is getting backwards. You know that yourself, you said it also. Uh, I know it's very different from your time, Amitage High School and uh, St. Peter's Technical High School, those days I could remember. Uh, that was, uh, that was, yeah, the education was okay. Even West Africa, Gambia was known to be very good those days, especially when we came to, uh, uh, how to call it, uh, G uh, GCE, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, those things, you'll see that uh, Gambia was always one of the tops. But nowadays, I think even our kids have problems to, to, to pass the whole level. So people are worrying, why is that so? But for me, I think uh, there are a lot of factors, like uh, what people used to say, uh, we don't have teachers, you know, uh, the teaching salary is not that uh, attractive, you know, and, uh, and the poverty of uh, uh, kids, for example, you know, the chance to, 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 to use their talent in the private schools. You, know? you, mean, you mean the opportunities, right? The opportunities, you know, because they can be very talented, but when they cannot afford these private schools, that means they are losing something. And the government is not taking step, you know. And uh, most of them always ask, uh, what do I get from it? Because they are seeing, uh, the chances of intellectuals in the country and even how intellectuals are being praised or, or, or criticized in our society which I also wanted to comment on it I've seen that it was very unfortunate in the election time where people criticize intellectuals you know, that is a big mistake. I mean, we are all human beings, but they should not use the topic even for political reasons, because they should always think about the people, the kids sitting there hearing, or who are even aiming to be an intellectual tomorrow and hearing that from a politician. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a big responsibility. I mean, uh, they, they have a lot of topics to talk about, about Gambia also. Um, and criticizing somebody uh, should not be the, uh, the, I mean, the tool to use. Yeah, but to the say, tool, to say tool, Mr. Sawane is, is, is an intellectual, you know, and then try to criticize that. If, yeah, but if, if it is if, a constructive criticism, don't you think that is okay? So it will get us better? Yeah, that is even okay, but I cannot use it to, to put you down. So that means 
No, intellectuality is, is uh, something even like something criminal. You get me? Yes. Um, I, 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 I was hearing these things uh, in the election time uh, where I said, okay, where are we? You know, and now <laughs> we should be a nation proud of intellectuals and not criticizing but intellectuals. If, produce. if they yeah. are not producing, they are not um, being useful. But I cannot uh, put the intellectuals down. Doesn't matter even if, uh, if they are my opponent or, you know, I'm using the tool. You know, we should be very careful. I mean, uh, we are all human beings. We make mistakes and so. But people sitting at the top, kids are hearing what they are saying. You know, and uh, maybe most of the youths were, are hoping to be an intellectual. But when they see people at the top <laughs> trying to put down an intellectual, I mean, that is no motivation. We want to be real here. So the question is, are we not proud of intellectuals? Uh, are we not proud of our intellectuals? You know, uh, we have to say the right thing. We don't want to falsify the situation. We all went to school and are proud, even our intellectuals coming out from the colleges and universities every day are celebrating their certificates and so, which is very normal. They should be proud because they did a lot for it. If you cannot praise them, don't put them down using the tool on them. That is uh, something I just wanted to comment. Doesn't matter. Maybe next election it will be better. Yeah. One thing I can agree, college is very expensive. If you go there, uh, you spend your money on it, you get, you know, you graduate, it's, it's, it's really important. And also it takes a lot of stress, a lot of work. Yeah, but I think um, in this context, the reason why politicians are asking, where are the intellectuals, you know, when the struggle was going on and all that, because they were at the safe zone. They were not in the front line or kind of exposed themselves. To, you know, to fight for the well-being of country, the country from dictatorship. I think that is the reason why they're calling up on, on, on us. And to tell you the truth, there is some substance of truth in it. Some of the intellectuals who are not involved, you know, the local, our, our, our people who are not that educated, who are the one losing their lives in the front of the line. So that's why, especially when it comes to UDP folks, let's call it spirit is spirit. They were the ones who were suffering during Jamal's time. And some of them died, they were poisoned for the sake of the country. So if, as the intellectuals, either overseas or in the Gambia, we are not shown, we are not, you know, been out there, we should be asked, where were are we? I think that one is not, is not, you know, against anybody. That's just my opinion, but go ahead, Alice. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the next thing is, what I just wanted to say is, maybe the youths also ask themselves whether they have a chance afterwards. That's also one of the factors. I mean, uh, but I think the main reason here is that uh, we are having less government schools and more private schools. And how many Gambians can afford private schools? very little so that means all these kids who are living with their poor parents cannot visit these schools you understand normally it should be free for everybody rich or poor because the poorest child can be the most intelligent person you know to be intelligent doesn't mean that your parents have money you know and it's very sad to see a lot of these intelligent youths not to be given the chance to practice their, their abilities or even to do something for the country because nobody gave them this chance. I'm sorry you can have Gambians who can build a plane or, or do something very, 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 very interesting in this world for our country. But when they are not given the chance, we will not see their capabilities, you know. So, uh, uh, people used to ask, 
what is the government doing? Why are the private schools better than the government schools? You understand? Yeah, because building a school or building schools like Jamie did, he has seen that there was also not uh, very much <laughs> what came out of it. I can build the biggest school, but when I don't have the best teachers, I just build a school for nothing. And that's the mistakes many African people do, uh, African presidents. You can build a school, but the most important thing is to get good prof uh, professors and good uh, teachers. And uh, people ask why are the government schools not having good teachers? And everybody knows, I think. I think they, they are not good paid teachers, so they are not motivated. And even if they are teachers, they are not motivated, they'll just go there for their salaries. You understand? The motivation should be there. I think uh, that is something also very important. And But I'm feeling very sad for poor people, poor youths from the poor families. You know, right now the situation, you can only have good education from the private schools and they cannot afford it. And uh, I think here we need to have a solution. Like uh, when the teachers are good paid, you know, and make the teaching feel more attractive again like those days. You know, when I remember those days, St. Peter's, St. Augustine's, Gambia High School, you know, you have only intellectuals coming out. You know, because people were prepared from the primary school all, uh, already. But this is now not normal the case. You can only have it on the private sector. And that, uh, I mean, it's nice to have private sector, but the whole Gambia should not depend on private sector when we have the government and then have the chance to invest in the schools. And you know, my suggestion here is that the government try to build more schools uh, and then good teachers. Because building a school without good teachers is just like you building a hut. You know, that doesn't help any Gambia. Because the most important thing is always the teachers. They should be good paid, motivated, and qualified. Because they are giving their, 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 their how to call it, <coughs> their education to the, to, the, to the youths, to the young people. You know? And to make sure that maybe no school fees, especially for poor people uh, who cannot uh, afford even to buy a pencil. You know, and that, that doesn't mean that they are stupid. Most of the time, they are the most intelligent people. I I, I had to re, um, even experience that in my school school time. You know, I was in Saint Peter's. Those days, we had a boy. I think he was living around the airport. Uh, this boy was very very clever. So, but I think uh, after the third time, he had to leave the school. So we were very worried, and then uh, we, we happened to know that the parents cannot pay the school fees anymore. You understand? So this is very tragic. You understand? Just being poor, you cannot, you know, use your, your chance in life. You know? So, and that is long time here. There was nothing like even private schools and things like that. So my suggestion here is to make that free for the lower schools, if it is possible. Uh, try to make sure that we have less private schools and more government schools. And uh, yeah, the government should invest in this case. You know, it's nice to invest on roads and so. On. Yeah. But you need to educate the people because if you educate the people, they can help you building your country they can help you you know building roads themselves you know that's why the west they don't play with education right right they, they put all their money in education to make sure that people are educated because you have the people to build your wall exactly. when they are educated you win 
then they are not educated you lose no? we've seen that now with this war going on hmm? today it's not it's not about the title it's about what you learn so yeah so i think uh yeah so what i just wanted to say is even if the Gambia government is having a problem of uh, investing we have the world bank there if the Gambia government come with such reasons they'll have help there are even private sponsors you, you're saying that you know education can be supported um outside the Gambia the government from the government um outside of the government yeah 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 i mean the government should do that but i know they always complain the uh, gambia is poor <laughs> which is not poor we are working on a gold mine just that we don't know what to do with what is under our feet it's always like that we always wait for the white man to come and tell us look take this and do this you understand and that's been in africa a long time that's why many people when you say poor they say no <laughs> you are not poor you all just right. don't know how to use your resources all right perfect thank you alice all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh sam will come in and they can come in then we can um we can kind of ask questions because there's a lot of questions in this area that we yeah, need Sam, you can come in <laughs> yes thank you alice sam thank you yep thank you alice thank you thank you sam so much. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're can you hear me now yeah yeah we can hear you all right all right thank you alice uh thanks for that insight there um uh, very very important very truthful and uh you know where i want to start really is uh you know when we say education education is very very important and uh, if you want to know the value of education you first want to look at the product uh, of, of 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 uh, a great education system in a country uh because uh, one of the key ingredients to building a strong economy is to have an educated labor force. When you have an educated labor force, it helps you bring uh, uh, or build a strong economy for that country. And part of the reason for that, the educated labor force are the people that uh, not only have the education, they are the people that will really look at how things are going, be able to uh, do research, analyze, look at the numbers. Numbers don't lie, numbers tell you something. You look at the numbers and see where you're going by analyzing them and make a change. You know, recommend something, tweak something to be able to get better. Because, you know, as they call it, insanity. Insanity is to, when you continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a, a different result, that is insanity. So, and that's uh, what we end up doing. We don't want to be. We, we don't want to be insane. We, we don't want to be insane. So we want to change something, and to be able to make that change is the educated labor force. So, where do we get that educated labor force? This is where the government need to put a focus on, in our national assembly members that approves Gambia's budget. Uh, uh, the government need to budget for a very good system in the Gambia, which all starts with uh, uh, number one, I, I don't think we need two ministers for a minister of education. I mean, uh, America is bigger. We have uh, one secretary of education, not uh, two different secretaries of education. So we don't need two different uh, ministers of uh, education if we have the right person. So it starts there. We need to start from the top and go down by selecting the right minister of education that is going to have directors of different uh, subject matter areas uh, that will handle those areas and report to the minister of education. So starting there, uh, those people will be able to do their research and, and look at what is our problem? Why do Gambians fail the, the final exams? Why do we fail? Why are we at the bottom or why are we where we are? Even if we're not at the bottom, why can't we move the needle up and be one of the best in West Africa? This group will be tasked as the, the board of directors for our Department of Education uh, to be able to streamline and also uh, create a straight path for success in our education system. And in doing that, uh, after doing research, 
they will come up with ideas where they can restructure our education system. When I say restructure our education system, they're going to look at what is not working and eliminate those and put in place what will work uh, by piloting them in certain areas. Number one, you know, when you look at education in school, you're going to talk about curriculum, of course. We're going to talk about uh, the education itself, itself. What are we going to teach? Who are we going to teach? You know, at what level? What do we expect out of this? Uh, then you think about if that is what we're going to do as a mission, what kind of teachers do we need? You look at the kind of teachers that you need to hire in that role. What kind of background or education do they have? What kind of experience do they have? That, that kind is what is going to dictate what you're going to deliver to the students in class. Right. And then determine how much are we going to pay if we have these high caliber teachers that we're going to hire, how much are we going to pay them? Because you can't expect a high expectation from teachers and pay them very little amount that they can't even survive. They can't, they can't you know, uh, live within that income. They're going to struggle. And a stressful teacher or a stressed teacher is not going to do very well in class. They need to be at ease. They need to be able to do their homework, study what they're going to teach, do their research, get all the facts, and go teach stand in front of class and confidently teach a lesson and answer all questions from the students and be able to guide them towards, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the key elements of what will help them pass that exam. Because if you're going to teach someone something, it, it also better be some of the things that uh, uh, will be on the exams. Because as part of the research that that board of directors will do it is, what do we have on our exam? What is what are the areas that our students always face fail? Do they fail on math or do they fail on science or is it English? Let's focus on those and gather all of those facts and be able to, like I said, structure, uh, restructure the education system, have the right people, have the right train uh, teachers, give them the training they also need because sometimes it's good to train the trainers. So the trainers also need to be trained. The teachers need to be trained to be able to um, fulfill their obligation and teaching the right curriculum, curriculum to our people, not just anything. They um, should be a standard. Standard no, operating I, procedure. I, I just yeah. wanted to say something, Sam. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me, St. Peter's Technical High School. You know, I'm one of the uh, people from the second batch. Those okay. days. These people, they came and built the school. Uh, and then uh, that, that uh, from from the, the, that was the Irish people, you know. So for each subject, they had to employ an international guy who is good in his profession, whether it's maths, whether it's English. That's why we are having people from India, Pakistan for statistics, for example. You know, there were some Ghana professors, you know. So that's it. You have to invest yep. Yep. in yep. the people who are going to do the work, not the building. Exactly. I mean, Jame exactly. tried too, but he was concentrating also on the building. Yep. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, thank you for that, Alice. So I, I, I am getting there too. And uh, that's the direction I'm heading to as well, getting those subject matter experts in, uh, in each area. And we have enough Gambians to do that, really. We have people, if we're willing to pay them, we have people that have studied overseas as well mm -hmm. that can be great teachers in our country if we're going to pay them right, if the price is right, because they cannot leave what they are doing and come to help their country, but, but suffer in helping their own country. That should not happen either. They should be well compensated so we can have that. Um, uh, and, 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 and like I said, when we have that structure in place first, that structure, which is from the Board of Directors of Education, will also put in our standard operating procedures. Standard operating procedures, which is SOP, uh, will help guide all the schools uh, what need to be taught from a, a primary or elementary level to secondary and college uh, will be very crucial, very, very important. And this is the team of Board of Directors that will also uh, 
uh, help uh, uh, really structure our technical part as well by looking at uh, information and technology, uh, getting technology to schools and making sure that every school has uh, the high-speed internet that they deserve, they need to have, and every school has a lab, uh, every school has a library where they can go and study. Students can go. Students that cannot afford uh, 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 having a high-speed internet at home. Right now, I mean, getting credit in Gambia is a problem. You know, people have to buy credit to get to their phones, you know, to be able to use their phones. And, uh, and they don't have, most people don't have uh, internet at home. If you think about, uh, if you go to you know, the rural areas. People don't have electricity. People don't have internet, of course. So building, uh, when you're building a school- of when they have that not, in the not, school. Yeah, it's not, it's not just uh, building a school. Building a school is important, but what should be in that school is more important than building the structure. All right, right. So, right. so getting the school in there, getting a library in there uh, with electricity in, uh, and, uh, and of course, all the basic necessities, uh, high-speed internet, so students can go in because they don't have electricity at home. They don't have internet at home. They can go to a library at school for free, be able to get in there and do their research, do their homework, right. do research, look at things uh, that are outside of the box that they're teaching them, be able to really challenge their teachers in class make the teachers also think before they talk, you know, and, and really right, right, right. bring that competition in there. It's going to make Gambia grow uh, better and, and, and provide that better education for our, ki our kids, for our children, so that as they grow from elementary to secondary to high school to a college level, by the time they get to that, if they have all those facilities with the libraries where they can go study and do all the research, and uh, I guarantee you when they leave college, they will be very good. And some can even go and further their education overseas and they will be up to standard. They can get on a computer just that quick, log in, be able to use every function of the keyboard, be able to do their research and learn and come back to Gambia and, and help, uh, and, and help uh, make Gambia better again, make Gambia one of the best uh, countries with educational system, uh, which in turn is going to produce what I call the educated labor force. And remember, a key ingredient to a, a strong economy is to have an educated labor force. So yeah, our yeah. government need to invest in our education. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you, Sam. I just wanted to say something also very interesting because you were just quoting here. Uh, you know, our, we have here in Nida Zaxin, our min, you call it Minister President, is for this area the president, you know, because the German, in Germany you have a lot of those, and then you have the council. But uh, for, who is uh, responsible for Nida Zaxin? Now, he, now he's making a promotion saying with the new technique right from the start, you know, uh, uh, meaning that they have to start with the new technology very early and he's making uh, he's making big posters with two kids uh, they stand and then uh, trying to operate a tablet you know so that is exactly what you were saying that's why i say let me tell you that and he's right now making that promotion that kids should start the new technology right from the start because yeah, they know so that it's the future you know so it is. uh, it's very important you know, so 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 if we Gambia don't even start that at the right time or never, that means the gap will be always bigger because the, we, we we want to be living also uh, on standard. You know, I mean we cannot be one to one, but the gap should not be very big. You know, because later it's just going to look like uh, that we are the busmen. You know, uh, <laughs> because the other people are with the technique very far, which is very sad for our kids and their future. I mean, most of them are playing with their handies and things like that. They even know where to press better than their parents. You know, uh, my only advice is uh, let them know, but they should not misuse the technique. Let them not play with it. So that's why parents should always look at it. Are they using it reasonably? Even if it is handy, let them use it what 
it is made for and don't leave them go to internet looking around everywhere but to control it somehow i support the idea because yeah, that's, that's not, where they put uh, parental controls and that's it so that's kids it. cannot but access we, certain things that's it but we should yeah. not say that they should not use it they should use it but reasonably yeah. not to go to facebook uh, hitting around every corner uh, trying to look who is insulting who you know wasting their time that's not the technique you know people are using the technique for other things i said it here last time people are make, using the technique making millions you know uh, we should not use it just to quarrel or making politics even politics there is time when it's election it's election the rest let people go forward and forget about it not to talk about politics again the whole five years that is not going to bring gambia anywhere you know and that is also something wasting our time and the time of the youth you know uh, politics is good but the right time and it's time for politics elections let us all be politicians no problem after let everybody try to develop himself no that's it thank you all can i come in mr sawane yes yes you can come yes, you are welcome <laughs> all right yeah Nde, you can come in now you are on mute. um yes uh, thank you very much you're gonna excuse me for the for the video because i'm gonna be busy right now so my video will be um then i can speak like that no problem um, okay, okay thank you, you yeah yes thank you um the topic is very interesting um as for me i'm gonna speak from the from experience because as you know journalists they are always out there in the field and you know what is happening you know right because you sometimes know. i see yeah uh, <laughs> exactly <laughs> i see our education system as survival of the fittest because people from very strong financial background tend to receive very good education system than someone who is just an ordinary individual. Um, I could remember I once did a story about um, a province um, at Lower River region, that is Konyasaba. It's a village around Soma, you know. Um, they newly have, um, um, how to call it, um, upper basic school. Then it used to be only lower basic school. Um, students used to um, trans uh, sorry um, trek from their village to Soma to attend to upper basic school and just senior school. So they the management said that why not they operate upper basic school? So when they um I mean operate that newly, I went there to interview to see the situation, and then sadly, sadly, to my surprise to see this is a testimony from students, not even teachers, students themselves said sometimes they 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 usually use playing mats to to, to sit down during lectures because they don't have enough chairs. They don't have enough infrastructures, enough facilities to 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 do to 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 have their lessons. So I did that story, and then I wanted to publish it to seek um the the ministry's version of it, that is Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education. And to to my surprise, they were not available. They were too I can't say the, that's how I put it. They were too busy to respond to to, to the story that I wrote it. And that is how I published the story because I cannot wait for them. I asked them to to tell me the uh, the, the the reason behind that. To my surprise, they are not ready to, to, to respond. So to cut it, our education system is very, very, very poor. Definitely, it's very poor. You know, and I believe the government is not, I would say, is not willing to, to, to step down because teachers at any country should be the priority of any nation because education is everything. Education, if you, if you want to develop as a nation or as a country, education should be your first or number one priority per se. But I believe here in the Gambia, like the government is not really serious about issues that are related to teachers and teachers should be one of the people that should be embraced that should be i mean celebrated every day every right, second because right. they contribute to the development of our nation but if you look at the education system if you go to certain schools you have um i mean pdt teachers or whatsoever trying to teach um with 11 students i mean fellow students people that you know they have basic basic knowledge in their areas of specialization and you allow you expect them to, to teach students from grade 12 or 11 how will they deliver how will they be able to do that it's really, really very right. sad, and I believe as a country, and I'm, I'm coming to what Sam did mention, that is having two, I mean, Ministry of Basic, two education ministers, that is higher and second, basic and secondary education, you know. It doesn't make sense. If we have two ministries, you know, and at the end of the day, they cannot they are, they are more of the They are more of the posts than the tools, and the tools exactly, are the teachers. Exactly, exactly. They are more <laughs> so of the posts than the tools. it's a wrong business. <laughs> And that is the problem we have in the Gambia. People are interested in the name or the position. But when it comes to, I mean, taking action, that is where the problem comes. You want to occupy a position as a leader. When it comes to taking steps or whatsoever, it becomes a problem. 
And I believe as a, as a, as a country, we really need to, 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 to work hard because I don't think this is the Gambia that Gambian people voted for. We voted for change, but it's like our, our dreams that we, we hope for. It's like it's been shattered or it's becoming shattered, you know, because they're not seeing what we expected. This is not what we voted for as Gambia. And this is not what we expect from the government, you know. So to cut it short, or in a nutshell, our education system is very, 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 very poor. And I believe as a country, we have a lot to do. The Ministry of Basic yeah, and Secondary yeah, Education has a lot to do because it's so surprising that, I mean, um, seeing the, the, the results from the from the recent graduate, the, the 12 results, it's very disheartening to see a country like Gambia coming up with such results, which is not very impressive. Yeah, so you I can see the difference. Ministry, before, yeah. before, sometimes, Gambia was, uh, I think, our time, uh, especially GCE, uh, I think Gambia was sometimes even third position, I could remember. You see? But now um, things have changed. Because things those days, changed, so. yeah, yeah, those days you had we we used to compete within these high schools. Uh, you had Father Goff there, no? Uh, for uh, and you have Amitage High School there. We, uh, we you have Saint Peter's there, Nusrat, you know. Uh, exactly, and everybody exactly. wanted to have the best, yeah, classes and things. And 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 you see the whole of Gambia. Then sometimes we are around third position or so. So you cannot compare exactly. it now. So the question is always, why is it so? And there was nothing like private schools and so. That people exactly. go to normal government schools, especially primary school and so, just a general of time, is free, you know, to have mm -hmm. a start. And that mm -hmm. is no more the case now, I think. Yeah. The poor people cannot it's, afford it. It's like, exactly, there is a problem somewhere. And unless we are ready to solve this problem, we, we will continue to, 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 to experience such things unless we, we are ready to step in as leaders of this country or as leaders of our education sectors, unless we are ready and prepared to respond to the challenges. Because this is an issue and it's a national concern. It's a concern because the reasons we are so disheartening to see Gambia being, I mean, it's so crazy. I, I see it as uh, the cat before the horse, no? Nate, yeah. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah, okay. So they go ahead go ahead um yeah my, i'm done with my statement so that 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 is it we have a okay. long way to go as a country yeah so th thank you so much for all of you um your ideas on this now i'm just gonna go ahead and then ask questions um alice but before that i just wanna hit yeah. on a few areas you're welcome yeah a few areas that we probably are looking at so we have an we have an issue here um we have an issue with resources, we said. Uh, we don't have the resources uh, for our, our, our students. So some people are asleep. I mean, some people are sitting on the floor and not even having a desk or chairs to, to, go, to, to, to study on or to attend classes with. And some people, um, some, some, some staff, even the teachers, sometimes, you know, like they, they use the same facility uh, to sleep and then the same facility for classrooms. We have seen those noses. Um, so the resources are not there, and they mentioned something about uh, the hope that we had 2018, 2017, um, 2016 election, that we are expecting new Gambia, where education would be a priority, where we will see a lot of changes. But instead, we are even, it's even worse right now. Um, we are seeing a horrific, you know, a horrific situation whereby classrooms are on a, inhabitable. Um, teachers are struggling with the students. They don't have, you know, any kind of resources. So government hasn't put a priority in our education. So resources-wise, we are down. Okay, the teachers, and they mentioned the teachers, are not, they don't have the teachers uh, that are, you know, efficient enough to teach the, the, the students. They don't have good teachers. And te teaching is supposed to be a profession where, the, where, where there should be more pay. Why? Because these are the people who are, who are bringing up the, the official leaders. So if we don't put more resources there to raise their pay so that it can, it can be an incentive, then there's no point. I mean, like many people wouldn't, wouldn't, um, wouldn't sacrifice their time and their knowledge to become teachers. And we don't have good teachers. We're gonna have teachers that are okay. And that's not gonna help. That's gonna, gonna get a populace a students of intelligent folks, um, you know, because of, because of the fact that we don't have good teachers. So that's a, that's a lacking. And then also um, we're talking about um, the, uh, the government role here. 
uh, everything falls in the government. Why? Because Gambia is a democratic state and also government control most of our wealth. So if they put um, emphasis on something or they put resources on something, most likely it becomes a success. So if the school system is not going, it, we have to put fingers on the arm um, point fingers to the government. Now, is this is the problem our educational system itself, our curriculums, our system, or is it only on these things that we mentioned, resources, teachers, government, you know, not putting too much um, focus on it. So that also needs to be revisited because our curriculum and our, our system uh, could really dictate what kind of students we, we, we uh, what kind of students we breed. Like for example, Alice mentioned, the time of 1980s, that's when I went to school, to high school. <laughs> so, and before that, before Jamis era, you're talking about education system in the Gambia. It was good. Even though we were poor, okay? We were still not, you know, you know, the richest country around in West Africa. We were as poor as any other country. But the fact that educational system was different. We had the common interest where almost a handful of people passed. The time that I was taking it at Kerala in 1984, it's only five of us out of 50-something students. It, it would be a miracle for you to even pass government trans. That's how much competition involved and how much, you know, the system involved. Now, you gra you graduated, you go to Amitage schools like Amitage High School, the competition is so high. You know, we, we fight for great grades. We, 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 we do the exam period, we don't sleep. You know, we compete, who is getting first, who is getting this. That, that, that passion to become the best and then how you, that has been regarded at that time is different from now. Now, you know, you, you kids go to school, it's you okay. okay. You know, they don't even, they can't even write a good sentence. Because why? The educational system, that is depend on the system. So when Jamie came and he introduced this grade level, then that's where our system become lack and lose, losing up a little bit. And people are just going to high school just to graduate. He was and, not good advised. Exactly. So that, that's why we don't have the kind of talent that we used to have. And then this, this you don't know this until you come out of, you know, move out of the Gambia. Look at when, um, if you travel, like when I came to US, I went to college. The only reason why I was able to adjust to calculus and other things, because I had the background. I, I had prior juvenile, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. was a great you know, teacher. You have to be good, otherwise you're not in that class. So mm -hmm. do, you have to, our students have to have our kids have to have the foundation in order to compete in the international world. Otherwise, no, no, we were we were yeah. we were, we were yeah. learning Mr. Sawane very differently. Yeah, because I realized that too. The time I came from Gambia here, I was afraid of uh, you know their standard or something like that. But I was I was surprised. You know, they were looking at me like said you know just because I come from St. Peter's. You know, I mean, it was good. They were having very good teachers. I told you, international teachers, most of them were not Gambians. I think only two people were from Gambia. That was the person teaching uh, 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 woodwork, Mr. Sonko. And uh, there was one Mr. Nyai. But if not, they are all from the whole world. Indians, Pakistan, uh, England, you know. Alas, alas so, that, that, was, that was good. So I came here. Those students, those teachers yeah. were good. Yeah, but I am just telling you, when I came here, I found everything easy. So it was very relevant, you know. So, so you that's, have, that's, that's where we come again. You had the teachers, you that's had it. the background. That's it. I have the, I have the background. They yeah. didn't even expect it. Yeah. Exactly. You know? So, so I, could, it, I could even do my master's very easily because I was now, having now this is, background. What we're trying to do nowadays is different. A student comes from the Gambia. It has to be a top student to be able to even perform well here. It has to be an extraordinary student to be able to perform well here. Because we will not even start because there is no standard anymore. Because at a, as a, as a, as a, at a level, you have to be even to mix yourself. If you are on that level, so, then you are left with only to go and look for jobs and do and low jobs because you don't have, you cannot so that That's team. why, that's why we have a lot of youths from high school walking around in the garment, okay? 
they couldn't find a job. Even well, it's not their fault. <laughs> jobs that are there, they were they are not qualified for it. And yeah, definitely, government has to do something with that, and private sector, whatever you have to blame. But there is also a deficiency in our education. And if they go outside the Gambia, they face the same situation. Yeah, yeah. They, or even 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 worse. Even worse. Sentence. If they write, you look at it, you you'll be like, what is going on? Have they really completed high school? So the point that we were trying to say, we have two problems now. We have a system problem and resources problem that you know that definitely would be the responsibility of the government. Our time, we had a resource problem, but we don't have system problem because the system worked. It was free. That's why we were free education at well. the beginning. That's why I suggested that again, that uh, at least the government make free education especially for the lower low levels uh, i mean like primary schools kindergarten you know up to primary school maybe even secondary schools also you know no the fact no. that they cannot help up to the high schools because our time the majority didn't do that we had to pay also ourselves somehow um with maybe scholarships but at least to make it fixed and a law free education for the uh, lower schools, you know, like from kindergarten up to uh, end of primary school, you know, that can at least help the students to have a good background and help the parents. Our, our, our constitution says mandated free education and compulsory primary school education. Yeah, but it's not. But because of yeah. lack of lack of resources and educational infrastructure, that's why it is difficult to maintain. But the constitution said that. Everybody should have a free education and compulsory primary education, at least primary education. Yeah, but you know, when, when the constitution says that, so you just build a school and you don't put their teachers, you can still say the constitution said that. And you, you know, know what? We, our problem is not the constitution <laughs> here. Surprisingly, 77% of our, our, our kids are enrolled. What happened to the 23%? So even though the constitution says this, they still our, our our people are not enrolling their student kids. I will take you an example of my my village. My village, we had only we were about one percent the time I was going to school. My village Swarakunda Swarakunda village in Lower Body. One to two percent we are going to school. So do you believe the, do you blame the government for that? Yes, maybe they should force them. Maybe, but people parents are not taking their kids to school. If you look at my age group from my village, most of them are not educated. If you look at my mom's age group and my dad, <laughs> none of them were educated. So who do you blame? You blame our no, fathers but, or parents? But, but, no, the parents should also be educated. And if a government fails to do that, you cannot blame the parents. You know what we are doing here now is exactly for that. We call it civic education. Just that uh, the Gambian government is not serious about it, but other countries, they are serious about it. Because they know in Africa, you always have that difference. For example, people with 40, 30, they were not in school, but they have to leave standard. They have to know certain things. You know, they should not be, should not have that disadvantage, just that they didn't go to school. They should not know this and that. And that's where civic education comes. That's what we are doing. But other countries, like Ghana, for example, is our neighbor. They take it very seriously. And they do it very correctly. I think the government put also a lot of money. Because this is the school for people who miss the school. You understand? And uh, a government, a serious government, should also take that very seriously. Because these people are part of the society. You understand? So, for example, your parents, if I told that Gambia was doing this civil education a long time, you'll see that maybe your parents will even know their role to play. You know, the, that age, I mean, they'll send to there, they'll send these people automatically to school because they know the reason behind. Yeah. You understand? So, your age time, that is the time where it's also a generation for itself. You know, you see, after your generation, things were changing again and getting better. You know, so it's a, it's a process always. Yeah. Alice, before Sam comes, um, 
during our time, we were paying school fees, okay? But in February 1998, the Gambian government had begun a major educational initiative, including 15 year, 15 year plan, okay? That emphasized that, you know, like they you know, eliminate fees for all, you know, uh, education, all education. That was, that was, uh, that was after 10 years, almost 10 years after I graduated. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. I graduated. That yeah. was 98. Okay. So yeah. they, during Jamaica's time. So a lot has been done in terms of free education. You know, with all Jamaica, with all his, um, you know, downs, he did a great job in terms of that. Because I used to pay school fees. And I'm pretty sure, Sam, you guys used to pay school fees during our time. So yeah, no. but, but the problem, Mr. Sawane, is I cannot say I cannot say free education no, what, what, when yeah. there is no teacher. No, no, no. What I mean That's is where we are. Because I used to go and farm. I pay my school fees. If I don't go pay my school fees, I don't go to school. Yeah, this, that was this, normal. This is, this is this is this is and I'm pretty sure Sam and Alas, if you guys remember. Unless you are not going to test I know, them. I know, I know, I know, but uh, in the high school. school. By, by some rich person in your family, but I used to do that. So now the kids don't have to worry about that because Jamis initiated that 1998 and onwards. Okay. So, but what I'm trying to say is that um, we still, we have a problem. You fix one area, now the system itself is not working. So I think, uh, uh, you know, um, Borough's government are uh, 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 working like a lizard, not really um, attacking education, especially technology. They're not doing that. Technology is the is the word of the day or the word of the century. <laughs> you invest, yeah, yeah. you don't lose. Yeah, you have but to prepare the youths for it. So what is Borough's government waiting? Can I come Why in are now? They using all this opportunity, take any kind of loan. I will take any loan for education. Do you know why it's gonna pay off dividends in the next 10, 20 years? Before you take car okay. loans, before you take loan for luxury, you know, per, per diem and, 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 and stuff like that. <laughs> they can per diem for your whole family. Let's talk about education. Let's talk yeah. about education. So right. I, I will come in now, you know, I think uh, so it right. all goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, we need, uh, restructuring of our education system. Gambia needs a lot of restructuring, all right? They need a lot of reforms. We know there's a, 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 a security reform, civil service reform, uh, uh, healthcare reform, educational reform. I mean, you name it, we need a lot of reforms that need to happen in the country, right? So, <laughs> so education, this is where I started. That's why I said. We need to reform people too. Our <laughs> leader reform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, on the list so, is over 100. So, so that's why I said we need to reform our education system uh, by getting, you know, looking at what do we really need. We need to have uh, just one leader as a minister of education. That's one leader because and we need to ask ourselves, since Gambia had two ministers of education, what did that bring us? What did we gain out of that? Is Can that anybody a tell us? Duplicate of roles or duplicate exactly. no, yeah, exactly. just to give so, people posts. So, so one education. minister of education is enough if we have the right person. That right person then selects his director of education, director of uh, extracurricular activities, because that's very important in school as well. Uh, director of different things, you know, that that are going to help him. And they form their board of directors for the school uh, department of education to be able to do a research first. Before you act, you need to do a research and see what's working and what's not working. What do we need to bring? What are we lacking on? I mean, if you look at all the questions that we ask, the answer is all the above. They, we are lacking all of them. And so we need that restructuring to be able to get there. Uh, and when we do that restructuring, that's what's gonna help us uh, achieve all of the things that we do. But not only you restructure, when you make a change, you've got to look at your change. Look at your plan. Like I always say, you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Is right? time that you come to the show? You didn't mess on that? <laughs> I cannot remember. <laughs> I always wish <laughs> that is coming. That is you can, time, then you can see how many things we do without plan. <laughs> yeah, we have to plan everything. So, 
So, so that board of directors are the planners. They are the people that are going to plan the future of education in Gambia. And with all the things that I said, including technology, all of that needs to happen, really need to happen. But you've got to have the right people that are going to look at all the components, key components that are going to contribute to our educational system to be able to move Gambia forward. And like I said, uh, a part of uh, 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 the ingredients, one of the ingredients to a strong economy is to have an educated labor force. And the educated labor force is very important because that's what also is going to move, that's what's going to move the country forward. So, so, so with that said, I just want to make sure I bring this out. What is, what is the plan forward, Sam? Well, the plan forward, uh, in, in, in my mind, I'm just going to say my opinion yeah. should be that the president should really remove a second minister of education. If you look at the, who are the minister of education, if we have one in there that's capable, that has fulfilled his role, his or our role, and, 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 and outperforming and doing a fantastic job, make that person the uh, minister of education or look outside. Look outside of them and find somebody else in the Gambia that can be the minister of education. That is going to bring the change. Someone that's going to have his directors working with him and under him uh, plan a good budget because planning starts with a budget as well. You cannot have all these plans and no funds for it. You know, you've I'm got wondering that we have only and, two. and get that budget uh, that it will be uh, presented to the National Assembly for approval so you can implement all the changes that you want to do. And another thing I, I want to add to this is, you know, if you look at uh, a lot of Gambians failing the West uh, African examination uh, exams, for example, uh, even what we call back in the days common entrance. You know, if 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 we see a lot of people are failing, we need to look at that. That board of directors need to look and see what are we teaching? Are we teaching what is coming on the exams, or are we teaching something else? They need to look at that and make the adjustment. No, um, and Sam, Sam, with common entrance is different. But right, I'm just giving an example. Yes, common interest is different. But the West African Examination yeah. Council yeah. used to used to give these topics yeah. Yeah. for yeah. every I'm, year. I'm, I'm giving an example of every exam. Okay. Every exam that the, the kids take. I just used common interest as an example. Okay. Every exam that kids take, if you see most kids are failing it, well, you need to look at. You need to take a, st seat back, a step back and look at what are we teaching, which is causing all these people fail. Are we teaching the right subjects? Is our curriculum uh, uh, up to standard? Is our curriculum matching what is actually coming on exam? If not, let's change the correct curriculum so that these people can be taught what they need to know because that's what's coming on exam. I can't teach you. You cannot be teaching students uh, one thing, but then something else come on exam. And another thing in, in Gambia that we that need is, to... That, we is, need that to, is important, So yeah, What you just said, important. mentioned yeah. now, yeah. because yeah. the West African yeah. Examination Council yeah. used yeah. to have a, a list um, of what kids should uh, yeah. be able to also know yeah. uh, uh, in this class and in this year, no? things and, like and that. And that's what needs so, to be and, your curriculum. That's it, that's it. There. So all African West West African teachers are doing it. They are going according to topics, going down, so that the kids can pass the examination. You, we are not hearing you. You are stopped, Sam. We cannot hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I muted myself for some yeah, reason. Yeah, 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 but, uh, yeah. but that's what I mean. That's what I mean by that. Uh, they need to start teaching kids from the uh, from the lower level. For each grade they move on to, there should be a curriculum that matches that grade, and that's what they need to learn. Uh, right. All of that needs to take place. Um, uh, there was something else I was going to say, and uh, now I forgot the topic. Sorry, topic. sorry, I, 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 I. I... <laughs> Confuse you. I mean, uh, I, I no, just said okay. yeah, yeah. maybe maybe, maybe because maybe. I said that there there is a list from the West African right, examination. Right, right, right. So, yeah, there was something. So in that just, no, but um, what, I, what I what I want to say is um, you mentioned West African examination and commentaries. Those are quota, quote, they, they, There are numbers that they have to um, they they, are, they have to get obtained. So that's why yeah. they have a cutoff line. You can yeah. Yeah. the number can fluctuate. If you're not lucky to to make that number, you're not gonna go to high school. Go to high school, yeah. And so another thing, you can pass an exam because you can get two hundred and forty or two hundred and thirty still yeah. pass. 
but still the cut of mark is 250 or 260 you Correct. can you so that one difference is not it's not depending on um yeah yeah so the the bottom yeah the bottom line there was really to for our direct our our ministry or department of education to look at what comes on exam versus what our curriculums are to be able to teach the right, right. things so kids can pass that's that's my bottom line so they can pass we should do everything we need to do to be able to get them to pass most people to pass not most people fail all right the other part i wanted to say is in gambia we are fond of teaching people you see uh, we are fond of teaching people um things that they need to uh really know now and memorize but not really knowing the meaning behind it i'll give a perfect example a lot of people you go to primary school today we teach them our national anthem for the Gambia, our homeland, we strive and work and pray. We know that things like that. We we teach them all of that, the national anthem. But what is the meaning behind the national anthem? They don't know. You can go to a high school today, probably, and, and ask questions about those. Some of those words, they don't even know what they are. They don't know what the meanings are. So we teach them to memorize things so they can... Uh, bring that up when there is a test they can remember it but what is the meaning behind that and how can you use that word for something else they don't teach them that we don't know that and 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 uh and uh, to alex's point too uh, what he was saying you know we teach a system a system of uh uh, uh remembering we teach them a system of a one-way street uh without giving them other options that's why education in uh, the Western countries, it's a lot easier because uh, there are options. There is an easier way. They've shown them the easier way. If I, t if I stand in front of a class today, most likely in Gambia, if I stand in front of a, a, a primary or elementary school and say, I need to get a number 20, what numbers do I add to get to 20? The first thing they're going to say is 10 plus 10. Because it's, it's, it's 10 plus 10 is what we start with, is mm -hmm. that gives you a 20. Mm -hmm. uh, without realizing, you can also say, you know, yes. uh, well, you can exactly, also yeah. Because also, I think you have, a, you have a good point there. Like, yeah. we, Gambia here, our education system, we teach people to pass, just pass exams, but what we, and they are understanding of what we are teaching them exactly and what yeah. they utilize that is not, we, the focus is not on that. Their yeah. focus is mainly on but the, 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 exams, the, the, that is the, the problem you have also in the religion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, 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 <laughs> don't go there. Alas, don't go there. I don't go there. <laughs> that one is a big one. So, so, so my, point is, is, my point is, we need to make all of these clear. If I want to, if I stand in front of a, a, a third grade class and ask them, uh, I need to get a number 20. What numbers can you add or multiply to give me a 20? The first thing that's going to come is 10 plus 10 because it's easier. And that's what we teach them. We start with 10 plus 10 without also telling them you can do 15 plus 5 and get the same 20. You can do 17 plus 3 and get the same 20. You can, plus, uh, you can do 19 plus 1 to get the same 20. You can do 4 times 5 to get the same 20. So there is a lot of different ways we need to be able to open our minds and be able to teach the kids all the things that they need to know, because on the exam, you know, there may be a question maybe worded differently where the answer is still a 20. And our mind is 10 plus 10, it's 20. But there may be other wordings that can confuse them. This is why we need to have that board of directors for education system in the Gambia to well, be able to teacher. restructure everything. You know how, and you know how I that. summarize that, Sam? You know, the qualified teacher will how teach them that. that. Yeah, how do you so summarize So we that? still come to the same point. Need to understand. That's it. That's what I mean. Understand what has been taught. Yep, that's what I said. That's why I gave the they example of the national anthem. Don't understand what, they don't understand what those words if, are. If those, if those questions are tweaked or stuff have happened, so yep. the same thing, you know, they cannot figure it out because they don't understand the concept. They don't understand. Yep. The, the application, the implication of the concept. You know, yeah. you yeah. know, Mr. Sawane, Mr. Sawane, you know, I was a teacher, you know, in, in, in Gambia, you know, I was teaching very different. Exactly <laughs> what Sam is saying. Yep. Yeah, yep. That is the alternative. I was a teacher too. You, you, you tell the people yep. that there is also an alternative, not just this one-way traffic there. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
uh, training them just to pass the exam is also okay, but they should know yeah. also what is being taught. Well, today it's not about the, I said it here right at the beginning, it's not about the title, but what you learn. So what our kids are learning, because that is going to be useful for them, useful for Barrow and his government, useful for the nation building and all. You know, yeah. I mean, we are used to we are used to cramming things and okay. going forward. It's normal, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, but you cannot do it every time. One day you get chopped. You will have a problem. And you know? a perfect example here. I didn't mean to cut you. A perfect example of what I was saying is, you know, when I said, uh, I, if I stand in front of a third grade class and ask them. Uh, 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 what numbers can you add or multiply to get to number 20? Uh, most people will think 10 plus 10. But on the exam, they may have uh, a, a question like this. For example, uh, what numbers can you multiply to get to 20? All right. So they may have answers as A, 15 plus 5. Sorry, uh, 15 plus 5, yeah. Uh, B, 5 times 4. C, 18 plus 2. D, uh, 19 plus one, and uh, and said the last answer option will be all of the above. Well, at school we taught them 10 plus 10 quickly gets to 20. If they if a student don't see the 10 plus 10, uh, may start to wonder. Uh, they may start to get confused there. That yeah. all of these and the answer should be all of the above. All they may just choose one. Correct. I you know, know so you so there are things that uh, we need to do, and the only way to do that is to do a research. We need a board of directors for the Department of Education to do a research and see what we need to do. What do we need to do to really adjust our system, reform our educational system to be able to get to where we need to get to? Okay, thank you, Sam. Thank, thank you, Sam. Well, what, I, what I just see is- we, we, um, we, They can come in and then we can have questions and, and then uh, answer session if they yeah, are. Yeah, they, let, let me come in if you have something. Um, I'm afraid I will not be able to stay long until the end of the session because no, we are talking we, about we problem, but there is, yeah. there is much more problem here. Now we do things in the morning, we have no light. Until now, there's no light. This country is oh, full of problems. Yeah, that's where the problem starts. Seriously, yeah. exactly. That's a, so this... I'm having, yeah, I'm having low battery. I'm having um 11%. So I think I will just oh, leave my yes. farewell to and then, yeah. yeah. Wrap up. No, um, we just wrap so it up. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's been a, it's been a fun it's been a fruitful discussion, um, discussion that is very educative, and I think our education sector should try to learn from this know, and know, know. exactly and know what the what the, where the wrongs are coming from, where they have problem in able to tackle the, 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 the these challenges. Because, like I did mention, unless we are able to, I mean, know where the problem is, we will not be able to solve this. If only we know where the problem is, that is where we can take stuff. And I, I'm sure, like what Sam just did mention, that is to do a survey or a research to know where they are lacking to be able to solve this problem. Because education in, 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 in any country is very important. So I believe um, the, the Ministry of Basic and Second Education should take note and, and then to, to be able to stop down, step in as soon as possible. That's my final note. And thank you all for True. having thank me here today. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for your time. Your contribution. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so thank you so much, Nay. Yeah, take care. Mm. So um, Alice, you can come in. And then we can, uh, we no, can. For me, my my advice is we can talk about everything, uh, but we we come to the same point, you know. I mean, all is the job of the qualified teacher, and as far as our teachers are not qualified, you cannot blame the kids because they they take their time to go there to absorb. And uh, when there is no good teacher giving them something to know then uh, the quality will be down and that's where we are you know that's our kids cannot even pass uh, examinations oh, I, I, unless I, the government I, I, tries to do something yeah. what is it that is the way forward i ask sam the same question what yeah is my 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 advice is that the government uh, try to mo uh, motivate the teachers you know give good them salaries, good, salaries. Good, good salaries because yeah he's investing not only for the teachers, but for the kids, because when they are satisfied, the kids will be okay. So good, so, salary. good okay. salary, so that they, you know, as motivation, yeah. And then, yeah, try to, when the Gambia government cannot, I said it here, we try and contact uh, World Bank about this uh, project. They are always ready to help, you know, uh, must just be explained correctly, you know, and uh, or, or we look for private, 
sponsors instead of private schools when people have to pay and most of the Gambians are poor. So you'll see, to avoid that, our intelligent kids, uh, uh, to, to avoid them, that they don't have the chance what, to go. What about, what about scholarship incentive? That's also important. Yeah, before we used to, our, you know, my, our time, but I don't know now. You know, th that one too, you can still have sponsors who can do that. You know, so this sponsorship. Right? What, what about it's, diasporans, you know, you know, jumping in and then helping with sponsorship in school? Yeah, many diasporans are doing that. Many diasporans are helping their own brothers and sisters. No, no, know, no. How, how it is in Gambia. Not brothers and sisters. We're talking about general public. Yeah. How many diasporans can do that? Because it's about money. Being in the diaspora doesn't mean that you are a, you are a billionaire. Alas, Alas, it's not a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Sponsor five kids, you know, it's not a lot of money if you're in diaspora. That's yeah, you, you say that. Some people are in the diaspora, they are happy when they have food to eat. Don't forget <laughs> that. So being in the diaspora doesn't mean that you are a billionaire. It's just a name. Friends like Sam and yourself, I wouldn't mind to pick up five, five, five students and sponsor them on a yearly basis. <laughs> Sam, you see, he's making you a billionaire. Oh, and yeah, if you don't yeah, do yeah. it, Tell people me. will blame you. You are a bad man. He is forgetting himself. That is, that is going to be a good incentive to start with. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead, Alas. Go ahead. I just wanted yeah, to... For me, I did my part. I brought a project there for the youths and nobody helped me. I wasted a lot of money that I have to give up. So that's enough, you know. Yeah, so, ahead, ahead, Alice. I was just, I was just trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, I think, uh, yeah. As, as I just suggested, no? to make sure that uh, they help the schools and the students, especially the lower classes, because that's the background. It's the most important part, you know. And try to help the poor parents who cannot send their kids to school, uh, especially to, to 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 private schools, you know. The private schools should not be better. That means the government should bring the government schools to standard. So what? That, yeah. What about yes. this mindset of sending your school to, uh, you know, sending your kids to school? Um, it's not, you know, religiously um, this thing because that has been an issue and it's still there. Some families don't. The qualify doing some more more than you know English schools. Um, how do you? How do we try to? How do we try to? How would we try to change that to encourage these people to send their kids to school so that they can have um yeah that that one is a religion problem that's why you know and all these things are pulling us back you know religious problems tribal problems and yeah, so but, forth but, you, but, it doesn't, but you know does it mean religion. somebody who go to religious uh data or religious school is more religious than somebody who goes mm -hmm. to english school? is that a mindset that we can um yeah, yeah, even the religion, you know, uh, to re the religion and the Arab Islam way, they are two different different things. You have Arabs who don't pray, you know. So what we Gambia, we always say when somebody is Arab, is always near to God. Some are even uh, worst, you can say. So we have to eradicate how, that in our head. How can we take this all, uh, 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 these people even in this whole... I said this here, it's a, it's a generation. For example, you gave here an example from your parents, you know, that was the time people were also very careful, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, so they were very skeptics about the, 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 the white man schooling, you know, because that's it. And, and then most of our opas and so they knew more the Arab book and the arab language but, but unfortunately but the arab money was there can they, can they, i mean not in the gambia i mean maybe in saudi arabia you can get a job when you master um <clears throat> arab you know arab language. i mean like when you master the religion but in gambia i mean i haven't always you become a marab and my, yeah it, yeah in the in the gambia uh, it's just like that you and sam would, would, would ever want to do i mean i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is so. The the beginning after the colonization, you know, you know that uh, jobs were only given uh, from the white people, you know, where yeah. you can you can earn more and then where you can you know live good. Or become a fortune. So, but before before, before yeah. Um, um, yeah, before, I think we're gonna 
you gotta be rich. <laughs> I know, I know. So you'll see that before we could only go to Dara and the Arabic language was there. So later on, the people see, uh, you know, when you go to school, you have work, you can, you can, you can marry four wives, you can drive a car. So and it's our national language, you know. Uh, you cannot say, okay, even if the national language is English, I'm not going to learn English. Because English is taught and in the schools and every, everything. So, uh, unless you want to need more, uh, no more, then you go to school, especially the English one, because they can teach you more. And, the, and then later you have the chance to get a job easily from the government, because the government is looking for people who can write English, you know, even being a clerk or something like that, you need English. So this is this is normal. You have countries like Sudan and so these people don't follow their colonial masters, but they are more for the Arab language. I mean, they are having serious problems with their development and so because English is standard, you know. So uh, more or less, you know, you have Francois too, German very little, but English, if you can. You know, and, and for us, it's English, the, the national language. So we cannot avoid it, you know. No, so, I, so, yeah, I, you <laughs> know, listen, we, we don't have any problem. Gambia can even use Arabic language as in, in their official language. It's fine. As long as people can have a job in it. The problem here is that the reason yeah. why English, you know, people are studying English because there are jobs. Our system is structured in a way that you can get jobs. You can become teachers. Of course, you can become an Arabic teacher also, but the, the jobs are more there. So I think these local people who are still are not sending their kids to school because they fear that their kids will be kafir or they will not pray. They need to understand. To me, in my opinion, the government need to sensitize them, maybe send people to them who speaks their dialect and let them know that you know these are examples of people who are educated. They went to Western school and they are good Muslims. They are becoming, you know, even yeah, you had Muslim high school, you know, yeah. you could learn both of them. I knew, so, I knew a lot of is, friends there. They will get out of their uncomfort zone and start to send their kids to school because at the end of the day, we need these kids to be able to find jobs, you know. Yeah, but Mr. Sawane, Mr. Mr. Sawane, I know your position. I to memorize the Quran is great, it's the greatest yeah. thing in the world. Try to tell you the truth, but if it cannot give you a job then we need to figure out another way how to how to study. That's the condition of the Gambia. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me come but, in. I, but, you know, I, that makes I, sense. I, I think so. But, I, I want to come in and I want to start wrapping this up because uh, yeah, 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 this yeah. can go it's on not, and on for, uh, Mr. for Sawani, a long yeah. time. But uh, I'll look at education as education, regardless of what you learn, okay? You can go to school to learn English. You can go to school to learn Arabic. So if you go to Arabic school to learn Arabic, uh, in, in most cases that I've seen in the world, even in America here, uh, my son is in high school now and he's, uh, he's taking German, you see? So, so uh, students, in, in, in when they get to middle school or, or high school, they, they have an option to take another language. So the Arabic students that go to Arabic school is perfectly fine with me. They can take English as a second language and study English as well while they're doing Arabic. Now, when they finish, is, is the government, this is why I said restructuring is very important. We need to restructure our education system. The government should be able to allow these people go to Arabic schools, graduate from their high schools, go to college. Uh, uh, the, the board of directors will also be looking at things, uh, places where they can get scholarships for all English and Arabic students. <clears throat> now, when they have scholarships for the Arabic, the top performers, get awarded a scholarship, they go to uh, uh, Arab, uh, the Arabic countries to go study uh, for their education. When they finish, this is a great opportunity for the government to say, all right, we sponsored them. They went to Arabic school in, in Arab, in Arabic countries. Now they're back. We are going to use these people and pick some of them and post them to Gambian embassies in Arab, Arab nations, United Arab uh, uh, Emirates. And, and, and any country that uh, speaks Arab, you can have uh, a good counselor officer, you can have different uh, uh, interpreters and different uh, Gambians that can work in those environments because that's where they study. Now you put them where they belong. You put them 
what they've left, what they've learned. You put them in a position to succeed. You know, you can do that. There is a there, and, and of course, like Sawana said, they can come back and become Arabic teachers in our schools as well. They can do that. There are opportunities out there. We just need to think outside of the box. The government need to think outside of the box and think about how can we help. Not everybody's going to get a job there. Some of them will stay where they learn because just like all three of us, Alice is in Germany, uh, Sawana is in New York. I'm in Indiana. We are all living here. All right. They can go study in uh, uh, Arabic uh, countries and stay there. If that's what they want to do, they will be able to earn their living there by getting a job. Now that they've learned the bottom, it, line, the bottom line is they can, do you can study whatever you can, but let's exactly. and be successful. Where everybody can become successful. Can Absolutely. Get Absolutely. That's the bottom line. So I think, I, I think if anybody um is I, I speak German, oh, not English. <laughs> I think if any parents is reluctant to send their kids to school because they don't want to learn this language because they think this is the repercussion, we should be able to open up other avenues where these people can come and work. That's the key. And the government needs to look that's at this. It. That's, that's, it. that's it why I say restructuring is necessary in our Department of Education because when they do their research and restructure. All of the things that we talked about today will be part of that. They will put all of that, those components in the restructuring program so that uh, they can set up uh, a good process for success in Gambia. Based on people's choice, give them any opportunity to make them succeed. That's what is called equality. Equal, you know, we are different, but we can be equal or we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Equal chances. Equal opportunity. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you all. Yeah. And uh, we will, you know. <laughs> Keep Thank you, Mr. Sawani. Yes. It's a, it's a topic you can, you can we talk from morning to evening time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's a problem. We have a lot of problems. As they said, yeah. you know, <laughs> you have a list. Yeah. Yeah. Among uh, Lankite, Papanjai, some of our viewers who are looking to. Thank you so much. Um, Thank for you. Up, and then we will yeah. catch up next week, definitely. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Thank Alice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Sam. Yeah. Take care. Thank you all. Yeah.